All right, everybody, so the 9060 XT is here. This card is what everybody is hoping will be like. AMD's Hail Mary, the saving grace for all of the budget PC gamers out there who are looking to upgrade. And look, uh, we're going about this review in a different way once again. We are going to be speaking to those upgraders. What kind of performance increase can you expect from the 9060 XT 16 gigabyte for people who have three, four, and maybe even five-year-old GPUs. But AMD's claims about performance need to be addressed right from the jump because they do set some, I guess you would call it interesting expectations. On the surface of things, it looks pretty good with the RX 9060 XT 16 gig flexing its larger memory footprint at 1440p and beating the 5060 Ti 8 gig by about 6% overall and at a lower price too. But you'll notice the 9060 XT here is running at 180 watts and that's a bit of a problem since this is actually AMD spec for pre-overclocked board partner cards with upgraded cooling that'll typically go for a lot more than their quote unquote at starting price. Though you never know in today's market, it could be going for more or it could be going for a little bit less. Basically, there's a sliding scale for the RX 9060 XT specs with 160 watts being the default board power for 16 gig cards. Meanwhile, eight gig models start out at about 10 watts less. Or actually, according to AMD, it's 182 watt setting on both is reserved for what AMD calls their max OC board power, which is for those higher end custom cards. And naturally, that power headroom will lead to higher frequencies and increased performance too. The power color card that we're reviewing here is what you'd expect from an entry level 9060 XT 16 gigabyte. It uses the 160 watt spec, has a pretty basic compact dual slot cooler, and gets fed by a single eight pin power connector. Average core clocks under load are what you'd expect, and given the relatively low operating power, noise is kept to a minimum and temperatures are pretty low too. Ironically though, when compared to a stock RTX 5060 Ti 8 gig, it actually needs a little bit more juice. Meanwhile, literally the day before you're watching this video, we got this XFX card, which is a good analog of what a 180 watt OC card will offer. It's bigger, it costs a whole lot more, and because of the additional power, it also runs faster too. But look, this kind of frequency bump won't lead to a massive performance uplift. At most, it'll be something like three to 7% overall. So basically what AMD is promising here with this $350 GPU is 7700 XT performance and also performance that can match an RTX 5060 Ti while costing a bit less. And that's really interesting, right? Because this card could be what everybody has been waiting for. Everybody said that eight gig 5060 Ti, you should never buy it, and you absolutely shouldn't. But there are a couple of questions here. Number one, how many of these cards will actually hit AMD's starting at price? And the other thing, how many of them will actually be available? Anyways, let's start off with the charts. I'm focusing on generational uplifts for cards around the same price range here. So we've included the 7600 XT, 6600 XT, and 5600 XT, along with the 7700 XT. NVIDIA is represented by the RTX 5070 and the two RTX 5060 Ti models. All of the cards here are running at the reference speeds. There aren't any pre-overclocked models here. But despite this, the RTX 5060 Ti 16 gig does tend to run at slightly higher clock speeds overall than our 8 gig card. Look, this is all down to sample to sample variance. And that's what causes some of the minor performance variances you'll see in instances which aren't memory constrained, where both cards should technically have identical performance. In the vastness of nature, every color tells a story. Matcha green, the color of renewal and fresh beginnings. I mean, take a hint. Hydrangea blue, the hue of tranquility and quiet reflections on how easy it is to work in. Snow white, the essence of purity and crisp air and having all the hair after the assembly. And black, the depth of mystery shadows, but no mystery to hardware compatibility. This isn't just a stunning ITX enclosure, it's a vibe to shape your mood. The TR100 by Thermotech. Check it out below. And let's kick things off with the good news for AMD because there's a few games like Doom that 
absolutely see performance benefits from 16 gigabytes of memory. At both 1080p and 1440p, the 9060 XT is able to pull way, way ahead of the 5060 Ti 8 gig model while costing $30 less. Horizon Forbidden West is another one, though to a bit less dramatic extent at 1080p. But move to the higher resolution and the 5060 Ti 8GB becomes borderline unplayable, while the 9060 XT 16GB retains a lot of its performance. Meanwhile, the 5060 Ti 16GB proves that a larger memory footprint is pretty critical for cards with this kind of horsepower. We just have to remember it's also $80 at least more if you can even find it for its MSRP of $430 US. And look, AMD already had a pretty big advantage in Black Ops 6, but the 9060 XT versus 5060 Ti 8 gig comparison makes that situation even worse for Nvidia. While the XT is ahead at 1080p, it just goes on to curb stomp the Ti's 1% lows at 1440p. And honestly, the 8 gig card becomes a stuttering mess here. And this is not all about AMD's optimizations for this game either, because despite both running at about the same frequencies, the 5060 Ti 16GB offers a much, much better experience than the card with less memory. Warhammer is another example of exactly that. If we're comparing the 16GB cards to one another, it's a really, really close race, with the 5060 actually getting a narrow win at 1440p. But it's also obvious the 8GB card simply shouldn't exist, because the 9060 XT can walk all over it while, well, yes, costing less. There's also some games like Alan Wake where the benefits of double the memory are only felt at higher resolutions. Here the 9060 XT and 5060 Ti 8GB are evenly matched at 1080p, but when bumping things up the AMD card really starts pulling away, especially with those 1% lows again. We see that situation almost mirrored in Spider-Man, where the XT does have a lead, but can really start to stretch its legs at 1440p, and the RTX 5060 Ti 16GB is able to do the exact same thing against this 8 gig variant. So yes, there are certainly some advantages to having 16 gigabytes of memory. You just have to hit on the right game. And Space Marine is one of those. While the AMD cards in general struggle in this title and the 9060 XT loses big time at 1080p, it actually claws back a lot of that loss at 1440p, coming within about 10% of the 5060 Ti 8 gig. There's also a bunch of places where that additional memory simply doesn't have any perceptible performance advantage with the 9060 XT and 5060 Ti 8GB essentially being tied right across the board. Or again, the XT is able to go from a narrow loss to a tie or even a small win at that higher resolution. And some of these are in pretty demanding games too, all without impacts to visual quality either, or at least not from what our benchmark scenes showed us. Another thing a lot of people will wonder about is whether or not stepping up to a 5070 or a vanilla 9070 is worth the money. And yes, I can say, especially if you're going with 1440p, that money is absolutely worth it. There's also a whole bunch of games where the RTX 5060 Ti's have a distinct advantage, regardless of it being the 8GB or 16GB version, with Baldur's Gate 3 being one of those. Here the 8GB card's 1% lows stay well ahead of the XT, even though the averages are pretty darn close. As a matter of fact, every RX 9000 series card struggles with frame consistency in this game. Meanwhile, CS2 has always been a challenge for AMD, and that continues with the 9000 series. I mean, overall, performance is more than good enough for most gamers, but if you want absolute peak frame rates for competitive gameplay, you'll want an NVIDIA GPU for this one. Finally, there's Hogwarts, where average frame rates are good, but the AMD cards just fall apart yet again in the delivery of those frames. So even though it has more memory, the 9060 XT really doesn't deliver a pleasant overall gaming experience here, since there are frequent stutters and even a bunch of dropped frames. Moving on to ray tracing, and one quick thing to note here is we're using DLSS and FSR in their highest quality modes to prop up performance of these mid-tier cards in most but not every single game. But look, even with that crutch being used, this is where 8GB cards go to die, with the 5060 Ti just getting demolished by the 9060 XT in Alan Wake. Meanwhile, older AMD cards like the 5600 XT either won't run due to its low memory footprint, or they randomly crashed. Oddly, at 1080p, 
but not 1440p with the 6600 XT. And Doom, well, was no better for the 5060 Ti 8GB where it literally got half the performance as the 16GB version and once again got walked all over by the 9060 XT. I mean, if I had a 7600 XT right now and I was looking for an upgrade, there's just no way I'd ever even think about buying an 8GB card, especially not if I wanted to run with ray tracing enabled. And yet in the vast majority of cases, Nvidia's optimizations for ray tracing allow the 5060 Ti 8GB to, at the very least, tie the 9060 XT and in some cases pull pretty far ahead. But guys, let's be completely honest here. While a card of this caliber allows you to dabble in a little bit of ray tracing, you'll need a lot more powerful GPU to deliver a consistently playable experience. As a matter of fact, I wouldn't recommend anything less than an RX 9070 or RTX 5070 for these type of situations. So while there are a few minor wins for the RTX 5060 Ti 8 gig here, it's not like you should be betting on it for higher level RT. There's just no way that should even be part of the conversation. Of course, I also wanted to discuss workloads other than gaming. And look, unfortunately, these have never really been a strong area for any AMD card. I mean, in Blender Cycles, the 9060 XT does show a minor improvement over the 7600 XT, but it still gets beaten cleanly by the 5060 Ti 8GB and the 7700 XT. It's a bit more competitive when moving into animation renderings while using the EV renderer, where it essentially matches Nvidia's 8GB card Card while beating the 7700 XT. But then the wheels just fall off in handbrake. I'm not sure what it is, but the media engine in the RX 9000 series seems to have taken three steps backwards. Now this might be a driver optimization thing, but given it's been months since the 9070 series launched and this still hasn't been resolved, well, there might be something fundamentally wrong on an architectural level. Moving on to video export in NLEs, and again, the 5060 Ti series has a distinct advantage here, especially with their new NVENC engine supporting native 422 video. But honestly, given the 9070's surprisingly strong performance, I expected a lot more from the 9060 XT. I can say the same thing about Premiere. It just feels like AMD might have cut just a bit too much on this card to make it a viable alternative for creators against the RTX 5060 Ti series. It does get a good performance bump versus the 7600 XT though. Things get a bit better for the 9060 XT in SOLIDWORKS, but it's still a solid 10% behind the RTX 5060 Ti 8 gig. And that's mostly because these programs don't really benefit from anything over eight gigabytes of dedicated GPU memory. But we also have to take pricing into account. And in something like 3DS Max, the RX 9060 XT does make a good case for itself in the performance per dollar category. Though honestly, if you're hell bent on bang for buck, a used 7700 XT would probably be your best bet here. And finally, we have AI workloads. And I know a lot of people will probably probably shake your heads at this, but running localized training models is becoming a lot more popular these days. Anyways, with a more basic generative model of 8B, the 5060 Ti 8GB doesn't have any problem staying ahead of the 9060 XT, but if you load up a larger 14B model, things just fall apart for that Nvidia card. The same thing happens when running through AMD's native Rockham environment. 12 gigabytes or more is essential for those larger models, but Nvidia is still ahead when comparing GPUs with equal memory footprints. Nothing really changes when we factor a distill of DeepSeek into this equation either. While AMD is gaining ground, Nvidia's optimizations are still miles ahead for most AI related tasks. And you can absolutely feel that in the process on inference benchmark where every single AMD GPU just gets manhandled in both the FP16 and integer tests. I mean, it isn't even close. But if you use something other than the default Windows ML environment, like we're doing here with Onyx for AMD, suddenly things improve for the 9060 XT. The numbers, they're still not the best. And yet this gives you a perfect example of how a few updates can really turn things around in AI workloads. So all of this leaves the 9060 XT, at least the 16 gigabyte version, as what I think is a really, really good upgrade option for anybody who bought into the mid-tier GPU market a couple of years ago. It also offers a lot better upgrade path than the RTX 5060 Ti 8 gig 
ever could. And that's because while it might tie the lower end 5060 Ti at 1080p, the XT delivers simply a more consistent overall gameplay experience. And it also makes the jump to 1440p without its frame rates just dropping off a cliff in some games. In the most simple terms, this thing is less expensive while being a whole lot more future-proof. On the other hand, look, AMD was very, very careful here. They didn't want to make the 9060 XT too good. So there's still an absolutely titanic performance gap between it and the vanilla 9070. Yes, spending the extra money to step up to that 9070 is beneficial if you have the cash. And let's talk about those upgraders for a second. Well, this card will feel like a day and night difference for people still rocking a 5600 or even 6600 class card. I mean, we're looking at about a 50% jump over the one generation old 7600 XT. So folks with those older GPUs will only stand to benefit more, not to mention the larger memory footprint and the fact they won't need to upgrade their power supply due to the 9060 XT's pretty low power envelope. So basically what AMD has done here is make Nvidia's entire RTX 5060 Ti lineup, yes, even the 16 gigabyte model, Model, look completely and positively overpriced by comparison. Now, what NVIDIA should be doing instead of talking up multi-frame generation and pressuring people like us to talk about it for the fear of withholding GPUs, long story about that, but I'm, you've already heard it from other channels, what they should be doing is simply looking at their pricing structure and making the appropriate adjustments. But in their arrogance, I bet you that that won't happen. And if it does, well, props to NVIDIA. But to their credit, there are still two areas where NVIDIA does have an advantage, and that's in AI and creator workloads. While the RTX 5060 Ti 8 gig does suffer in some of those situations, mostly due to its tiny memory allocation, NVIDIA still has superior optimizations for applications outside of gaming. I also have to mention once again that every single one of these observations is about the 16 gigabyte version of the RX 9060 XT. That 8 gig model is out there in the wild too, at a price that competes with the RTX 5060. So don't go out and buy that one thinking you'll get the numbers that you saw here. So while the RX 9060 XT might not be that silver bullet that some people were hoping it was going to be, well, it does manage to move the performance goalposts just ever so slightly more into an affordable territory. And I have to give AMD credit for that. They could have easily gone out and priced this thing at the same price as a 5060 Ti 8 gig. And instead, they're undercutting it somewhat. But look, where this all lands when these things actually hit the shelves, well, that is anybody's guess. But for the time being, I am going to praise this card as finally being something that us upgraders can look forward to putting in our systems. Anyways, I'm Mike with Hardware Canucks. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one. Have a great day, guys.